I knew you would look beautiful up here, but truly, you look amazing, amazingly beautiful. It's such a privilege and an honor to be standing here from whence I come to be right here. You can't imagine. It's, it's a surreal moment of wonder for me. Thank you for inviting me. I work for St. Mary's Center as the Hope and Justice Coordinator, and I, along with 15 other affordable housing residents, housed and unhoused, are proud to be members of the Housing California's Residents United Network. I am a proud Latina immigrant from the Dominican Republic. Do I got Dominicans in the house? I came to America when I was two years old and hold, a, and hold a permanent resident green card. As you may imagine, since November 2016, I've been practicing the citizenship test. There are many reasons that after 50 years, I have finally been moved to become a citizen. The one reason that bothers me the most is that as an organizer, I educate and motivate people to vote yet I can't vote, so that will soon change. Thank you. I was raised in poverty in Richmond with a dad who worked full-time almost since the day he set foot in America, and a mom who spoke, spoke Spinglish and took care of her three children as her out-of-control diabetes took the best parts of her life. In my 50 plus years, I have survived sustained incidents of abuse, most by people who said they loved me and suffered through nine years of homelessness. I was a homeless mom with four of beautiful American children under 10. We moved from motel room to motel room, never having enough money to afford a place. One of the reasons was because it cost too much to be homeless. I felt like a terrible mom. I remember gathering our belongings at the 11 o'clock checkout time and going to the park so the kids could play because we had nowhere else to go. I hoped they would not notice how much trouble we were in, but I was wrong. They noticed and they still talk about it today. This is what I know now, but not then. Homelessness was not who I was. It was something that happened to me. The poverty and the trauma that I endured do not define who I am today. And those experiences did not make me stronger. Over 25 years of living in crisis crippled me emotionally, physically, spiritually, but it did not make me stronger. Let me tell you what did. There was a case manager at the Harrison House Emergency Shelter who took a risk to admit us when there was no room for families. She placed us in the adult women's section of the shelter until a family room opened up. That act of kindness stopped the cycle of homelessness I was trapped in. We stayed in the boss shelter and then their transitional house for 18 months. The staff helped me get what I needed to recover my sanity and my self-worth. I learned to make better choices. I got my priorities straight. They housed and loved and cared for me until I began to love and care for myself and my children. And then something miraculous happened because unfortunately it is a miracle to thousands of people uh, in my county. The Oakland Housing Authority had a program for homeless families and I was awarded a Section 8 voucher. And though it took me many months to find it, walking into our first permanent affordable home made me stronger. And finally, with a permanent, affordable home under our heads, we began to heal as a family. 
My children and I still face challenges. Life never got easy, but it got better, and we never went back to homelessness. After 18 years, I graduated from the OHA Section 8 Home Ownership Program, and I bought a home in a distressed neighborhood because I believe we have to be the change we want to see, right? As I returned to the workforce and my children grew into these incredibly beautiful, intelligent young people who are all doing well. I am an example that if we successfully help poor families, we disrupt generational poverty. My son William works in the biotech field and John Michael is enrolled in Santa Cruz University studying political science. If you would allow me to leave you with this message, if I could single-handedly address homelessness, if I had the money, the resources, and enough affordable housing units that match need, I would go to my disabled grandmother living homeless in a tent, and I would apologize. I would tell her, I'm so sorry that you had to endure hunger and cold. And I would apologize for allowing her to live in such despicable conditions. And I would ask her to forgive me for taking her dignity and for treating her as a second-class citizen. And then if she wants to, I would take her to a home where she would have a comfortable bed to sleep in with nice sheets and plenty of blankets. And I would show her the washer and dryer and tell her that she will never have to wear dirty clothes again. And I would lead her to the kitchen where she can sit and have a nice cup of tea. And I would open the refrigerator and show her fresh fruits and vegetables and freshly made fried chicken. <laughs> if I could single-handedly address homelessness but I can't, I need you. We have to do this work together. Each of us have jobs to do and access to opportunities to make system changes that help people and do no more harm. Some of us sit in positions of power, all have expertise. Some have access to funding and services and all have the will to do good. And if we do not falter, if we resist giving up, and we resist doing less, and we resist the powers that stand in our way, then together we can protect our unhoused people and protect our people from losing their homes and successfully house all people. I have this unshakable, unreasonable belief that we can see the end of homelessness together. Thank you so much.